All right, hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Keto Cooking Live. As you can see, I'm literally just arriving at my kitchen. All right, so I'm adjusting the camera as we speak. All right. Hey, what's up? I have to elevate this. We're live, baby. We all the way live. Welcome to Keto Cooking Live. This is our first live telecast on YouTube. So for everyone that's joining us, welcome and thank you. It is about that keto life. You know, this channel is dedicated to help people transform their lives through diet and nutrition. I'm literally just running in from, from a business meeting, which went amazing. I might have some, uh, some wonderful announcements next week. But uh, let me see if I can adjust this camera and get you guys with a better view of what's uh of what's going on over here all right welcome happy tuesday it's keto cooking live and today as you can see by the notes in the description if i did this correctly we are making what are we making A brown Butter, ginger, ginger brown butter, sea bass. I actually didn't get sea bass. I actually got some cod and I got some scallops. So I don't even know what I'm gonna cook yet. I might do the scallops, I might do the I might do the cod. But generally I do this recipe with either scallops or sea bass or halibut. I love a lot. I eat a lot of that stuff. But I found some nice wild uh, Alaskan cod when I went to the fishmonger. He said to me, this fish was swimming just yesterday. So I, I had to get it, you know? I had to get it. I'm super excited about that. But this dish is gonna be prepared. It's gonna be paired with some, some Brussels sprouts, uh, which are yummy cruciferous vegetable, great for keto, and mushrooms, all right? And one thing I love about mushrooms on a keto diet is that because keto is a high fat diet, you know, mushrooms suck up, soak up a lot of oil. If you ever sauteed mushrooms, you put oil in the pan and you add your mushrooms and the, the oil just disappears. You have to keep adding oil. So I think for that reason, um, you know, I really love mushrooms. So if you guys are tuned in, thank you for, for joining. Um, like I said, we're making a ginger brown butter. Um, I think scallops. I think we're going to go with the scallops today because they looked amazing. The cod also looked amazing. I think I'm going to make both. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I've been running around all day. And um, so we're about to get cooking. This recipe is listed on the description. So it's real simple. The recipe is listed for two. I didn't, uh, I didn't include any macronutrients for the recipe because... Um, you know, I, I could add that at a future date. I might just do this recipe, add it to the website, which is being developed right now. The team is working hard with exact micronutrients. But I really, I add a lot of fat to this dish. Like I said, when I saute the mushrooms and Brussels sprouts, which you'll see, that gets a lot of fat. And, uh, and I'm just not shy. Like the recipe, I think, says three tablespoons of butter. And I think that's just me being conservative. So you, don't, you wouldn't think that I'm a... Uh, but I, I go hard. I go hard in the butter in this dish. It's keto. It's a uh, carry gold... Uh, a grass-fed butter, which is delicious. So, um, so let's get to it. Let's start cooking. All right. And again, thank you for joining. So, but but do I have here? Un segundo. It's the magic of internet TV over here. I'm getting my Brussels ready. Picking the right Brussels for you guys. All right. So I got some little Brussels sprouts here, you know, little baby cabbage is what I call them. Like I said, it's a cruciferous vegetable and this is a uh, wonderful for a keto diet. All right, so this recipe that I'm making today is uh, making the recipe for two people. Like you see in the description, the recipe is listed there. So I have eight Brussels sprouts here. And then I have, get these bad boys out. I have two beautiful portobello mushrooms, all right? Two medium, all right? You can use one large or two medium uh, portobello mushrooms. 
You can also use uh, shiitakes, uh, cremini's, which are like small portobello, baby portobello mushrooms. Where's my garlic? All right. Um, or you can use, uh, you know, whatever mushroom you like, uh, uh, oyster mushroom, okay, if you like. But So we have our Brussels sprouts and we have our mushrooms. But before we get cracking on that, let's grab some ginger, all right? Because what's going to make this recipe special is all about the ginger, all right? For those that don't know, the best way to peel ginger is with a spoon. Let me make sure I'm in camera. You can get in all the crevices. All right. So, put that down there. All right. And so this ginger, we're gonna fine dice it. All right. I cut it into little, into little sheets. All right, and then little strips over here, little batons, all right, little matchsticks. And then I'm gonna cut that into little cubes, all right, little fine dice. So I have there, again, the recipe calls for about a tablespoon, that's a little bit more than a tablespoon of, of ginger, all right? And then now I have some fresh garlic, and I'm gonna fine dice that also. And so this, the wonderful thing about this recipe is that it's just a few ingredients, literally. It's just like five ingredients. What do you have? Brussels sprouts, mushrooms, ginger, garlic, your your whatever seafood you're using, and some butter. Of course, salt and pepper and olive oil. But uh, it's just a few ingredients, so you can whip this up really, really quickly. All right? So now, let's us... Let's us... Let's see if I can get a better angle here for the camera for you guys. Right, I guess we're, I guess we're gonna work on this. You'll bear with me, just a man. All right. So I want one more garlic clove because if you've if you uh, if you cooked any of my recipes before, you know that you can't have enough garlic. All right, it's like food of the gods right there. So, I've got my garlic, I've got my ginger, all right? That's gonna go into my pan. All right, I have a heavy bottom saute pan that's gonna go right in there, okay? I'm gonna put that off to the side because I'm, I'm gonna bring my skillet right over here so you guys can see what I'm cooking, okay? So now, I have my Brussels sprouts. We're gonna trim the bottom off and cut your Brussels lengthwise, all right, in half, all right? And so a lot of times, in, I remember in the past, I always used to roast Brussels sprouts, like everyone, almost every recipe you find is for roasted Brussels sprouts, which is delicious. It develops, you know, a wonderful flavor, but it kind of takes a long time, you know? It kind of takes a long time to, to roast Brussels sprouts. So we're gonna just slice them thinly. Alrighty. And if you have a, a mandolin, you know, a slicer, you can definitely slice those on there. You know me, my my trusted chef knife. We've been dating faithfully. I mean, of course, we've had rough patches, but since 1998, I've had this chef knife since I went to culinary school. And so we go together like Grandma Grandma All right. Well, like I said, the recipe calls for eight Brussels sprouts because that would be for two people. But I'm just cooking for myself right now. So I'm going to stop there and I will save those Brussels sprouts for uh, a special someone. All right, beautiful. Amazing. So my Brussels, my Brussels sprouts are ready. All right, I got those nice and sliced over here. 
great. I got those off to the side. Now I have my mushrooms, and again, I'm just doing one for me for now. But if you're doing two, you would use you would use two mushrooms. I'm gonna cut that in half lengthwise, and then I'm gonna slice thinly. All right. Wonderful. Now I have my mushrooms to the side. All right, now we'll get some fire going, all right? All right, so I have here, you guys can see this, okay? How you doing? How you doing? Welcome to Keto Cooking Live. All right, so I have in here, let me flip this camera for you. How do you do this? Oh, there we go. I found the magic button. Okay, so I have here my garlic and onions in the pan. Get some fire going. And I'm starting with cold olive oil, right? We talk about this all the time. You start with the cold fat. You heat up whatever you have in the oil. And that extracts the flavor. And it infuses your oil with that. So this oil is going to be infused with this garlic and ginger flavor. Like always, we're going to season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And so this is going to come, this is going to heat up rather quickly. As you can see, I have a lot of oil in there, but that's okay because it's high healthy fat. Not all fats are created equal. This is uh, extra virgin olive oil. And make sure my fire is hot. Yeah, it's keto. So we want a lot of fat. Plus these mushrooms and Brussels sprouts are going to sop all that up very quickly. So... It is perfectly okay. Let me get this back over here at a safer, a safer spot. So that's starting to heat up. So yeah, if you guys have any questions on keto, by all means, feel free to chime in in the comments below and I'm more than happy to answer your keto questions. And if you think that someone might, uh, you know, like this recipe, by all means, share. Subscribe, click the little bell so you can get notified when we put up new videos. Today marks March 26th, the official relaunch of our channel. So we're more than excited to start uh, just dispensing content that we've been working hard on to answer all your questions. We're going live every Tuesday night, Keto Cooking Live, right here on About That Keto Life. All right, so now our oil is simmering, as you can see, it's starting to heat up. All right, wonderful. Let me flip this camera, come back over here. Okay, so while that starts to heat up, it just needs a minute. All right, I actually have to get a different pan. This has no heat. I was wondering why it was taking so long. Because I use, I use a, but a butane flame for my lives so that everything can just heat up super fast. All right, now we got fire. All right, now we got fire. All right. So this oil, ginger, garlic is gonna heat up very quickly. Okay. And to that, we're gonna go with our Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. All right, in just a sec. Mm, this is already smelling super. Amazing. So I'm going to add my Brussels, my mushrooms and my Brussels sprouts. I'm not going to season just yet. I'm going to heat this up for a second. When you season mushrooms, they release a lot of water and then they start to stew. And we want to, we want to definitely saute these. So we, want, we don't want to season them too quickly. Okay. And I'm just stirring this around to make sure that everything gets coated with the oil because oil is a conduit for heat, right? So if your food is not coated with some type of fat, oil, butter, then there's no cooking going on. All right, so now that's getting hot, now I'm gonna season with some salt and pepper, okay? All right, back over here. Work with me now. So, 
If you're following along, thank you for watching. You can see on the recipe, making ginger brown butter or ginger butter sea bass. The recipe is for sea bass. I actually didn't get sea bass today, but as you can see in the recipe, you can do this with whatever your favorite fish is, and a nice white flaky fish or a nice white firm fish. And um, I today I got some wild Alaskan cod because when I went to my fishmonger, he said, man, I got some cod for you. This, was, this fish was literally swimming just yesterday. So, you know, when in Rome, I went ahead and I got the cod, and I'm super excited about that. That's going to be prepared really simply. It's going to be with a, a brown ginger butter. So, again, I got like about an inch piece here of ginger. And I'm going to slice that into thin sheets, okay? And then I'm going to slice those thin sheets into little strips, little julienne or matchsticks, you know? And I'm going to put that off to the side. So my Brussels sprouts and mushrooms are sautéed. Let me show you that. All right. So depending on, depending on, your, on the quality of your pan, how hot your stove is, this is going to take two, three minutes. It can take five seven minutes all right just want to keep an eye on it make sure nothing is burning make sure your garlic and ginger are not burning your mushrooms and brussels sprouts are not burning just get it a nice saute all right wonderful so welcome back cooking live keto cooking live every tuesday nights here on about that keto life we're making ginger brown butter uh, the recipe calls for sea bass on the notes below in the description if you look at the recipe But we're actually using cod today because like I said if you've been watching with me for a while I went to see my fisherman. He said he has some nice Alaskan wild cod that was just swimming just yesterday. I said give it to me So Oh man Oh it is delicate mm. It smells just like the ocean it smells amazing. I'm gonna put this piece off here to the side. All right, and I'm gonna cut this in two halves. So this is about a six ounce filet here, all right, which I'm gonna cut into two pieces just to make it, you know, a little bit easier, quicker to cook. That's all. So my, if you can see here, my mushrooms and Brussels sprouts have been sauteing. They get a nice and wilted. They're starting to get some color. Okay, and I need a new source of heat. One second. I'm here with you guys. Where are you? Where are you when I need you? I'm right here. We're still live. I'm getting a new can of butane. Like I said, when I cook live, I, use, I usually use a can of butane so I can get a hot fire and cook quickly. Because I'm cooking at home and these... These home stoves, you know, are not as fast as per as what I'm used to when I work in my in my commercial kitchen. But that's how it is sometimes, right? You have to improvise. We're really live here. All right. So our Brussels are just about done, but I'm gonna finish that off. I'm gonna finish that off with a little bit of wine. I'm gonna deglaze with a little bit of wine. So at home, you can deglaze your pan. Deglaze just means to add a, bit of li a little bit of liquid to your pan to release all the flavor crystals from the bottom. That's pretty much what deglaze means. And so I'm gonna deglaze my pan. Yeah, you're done. I'm gonna deglaze my pan with a little bit of white wine so that I can Sop up all those flavor crystals from the bottom. Oh man, that smells so good. It's driving me crazy. It's one of those days. All right, so I have some wine here. And because this dish is being done with chard with uh with butter, I'm pairing it with a nice uh, Chardonnay. It's a California Chardonnay named Domino. My uh, my wine guy up the block at uh, Columbia Wines and Spirits over here in Washington Heights recommended it. 
So I'm gonna try it. Woo! You hear that sizzle? Yeah, that's what you want. Woo, that smells so good. I gotta taste this to make sure it's not poison. Mmm. That's good. That's rich, buttery, even a little bit sweet. So I'm gonna go really, really good with this fish. Now, our Brussels sprouts are deglazing. We're gonna let that go so like the liquid is mostly evaporated. That's just gonna take like a minute or two. And then we're gonna jump on sauteing this fish. And this fish is really simple. Like this recipe literally takes just a few minutes to put together. You're gonna season it with salt and pepper. And then uh, we're gonna pan sear it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can use coconut oil, avocado oil. Um, and then when we flip it over, we're gonna add a little bit of ginger and some of that good Kerrygold butter and then just baste it with that, all right? And uh, just for like another minute or so and then we're gonna be ready to eat. That's how, that's how amazing and quickly this is gonna come together. So, my Brussels sprouts is done. Let me show you this. All right, so the liquid is almost completely evaporated and that's what you want. At this point, we're gonna taste we're gonna taste our Brussels and mushroom. And if necessary, woo, adjust the seasoning. I've told you this, my tongue is sensitive, it's my instrument, so. Mmm, mmm, that's good. That's really good. Styling and profiling. All right. Now, this fish right here is so amazingly delicious. It's like a it's like a Trey Songs video. For some of you watching, you know exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna get my pan on the fire and get that hot. Where's my butter? Out of my way. All right. Got that. That good old BAM in your face habitual grass fed butter. I'm a habitual grass fed butter eater. I love this. It is like butter crack. So yeah, get you some of that carry gold grass fed butter all the way from Ireland. Alright? And another recipe calls for like three tablespoons or something. I'm going I'm going hard. But like I said, this is how simple and easy it is to prepare a quick, delicious keto meal at home. If you come home late at night and you're like, man, it's been a long day. I really don't want to cook, but I have to cook because I love myself. I have to feed myself and I'm hungry. And you want something nice and fresh and delicious, pass by your fishmonger on the way home and say, hey, what delicious fresh fish do you have? Something white, delicate. I might have a glass of wine or two. Whatever, you know. It's a Tuesday, you know. Tuesday has 24 hours, just like a Saturday. So my pan is hot. My pan is hot, I'm gonna season my fish. And a wonderful thing about keto is that salt is your friend, okay? When you're on keto, salt is your friend, all right? Because you need that sodium. You lose so much water weight so quickly that you need that sodium so you can hold on. Hear the drummer get wicked! Love that. All right, so now we have a hot pan. A Little bit of oil. Fancy twist of the wrist. All right? And now we're going to move the pan and not the fish. Move the pan and not the fish. Move the pan and not the fish, okay? Because we want to get a nice, beautiful sear and color on our fish if possible. All right? And we don't want it to stick and tear apart and get funky. So we're gonna let it do, we're gonna let it do its magic, all right? And we're gonna let it sear there for a couple of minutes on that side, and then we're gonna flip it. When we flip it, we're gonna add some butter, some of that good Kerrygold butter, and we're gonna add some ginger, and then we're gonna baste it. Ah, uh, just habitually, habitually just basting it, okay, for like another couple of minutes, and that's gonna be done, all right? Now, the wonderful thing about when you have really fresh fish is that it does not have to be eaten well done. Um, 
But if you like your fish well done, by all means, cook it well done. I like my fish about medium, you know? And sometimes if it's really good fish, you know, I eat it raw or medium rare. But I like it about medium. So I'm gonna let this here for a couple of minutes on one side. Let me flip this over. All right. So that's that nice, delicious, beautiful Atlantic wild cod that my fish manga was just so kind. And now if you can see, you can focus there clearly. I will risk my, my recording device for your viewing pleasure. That nice, beautiful crust starting to form on the outside. That color forming. That's because I did not move the fish. I only moved the pan, all right? And then we can add a little bit more fat here because we're about that keto life, all right? And fat is flavor, all right? So now, I'm gonna attempt to flip this fish while you're watching. Let's see. Yeah, I need, I need, there's a two-hander. This is a two-hander. Sorry about that. But I'm going to... All right, so... All right. All right, so one piece came out nice and beautiful. The other one came out funky. But it's all good. Because I love them just the same. If you're at home, you might want to do this on a nonstick pan. And now I've had my heat on high, but I'm going to cut my heat down now. So about a medium, medium low. So you can see the one piece got a nice, beautiful color and seared. The other one came apart. But that's okay. They're both going in my belly. And now, as promised, ginger. Ow! That was my knife. I'm okay. And a heaping couple of tablespoons of that grass-fed Kerrygold butter. Look at that. Look at that go. Look at that go. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Look at that brown butter. Look at that brown butter start to form. And like I said, this is keto. This is keto, so you can never, you can never have enough butter. All right, I'm gonna get that ginger around there. I wanted to saute, I wanted to infuse those flavors. But now I'm just gonna baste this fish, just like that. Now I'm gonna baste it just like that. Get all that butter. Woo! Man. Do this on a nonstick pan. It'll definitely come out a little bit better. But you know, I'm about that chef life and about that keto life. And so when your butter's browning, one trick, if you wanna stop the browning, it's to add a little, bit of a, a little bit of acid, right? Like a little bit of lemon juice, lime juice, vinegar. But lemon would probably be the best thing here. But I like that. I love, in fact, that brown butter flavor. All right, so that's it. Turn off my pan and just let it sit there. Now, if you do this with a bigger filet, you might want to let it for a few minutes. But these are small pieces and they're just about done. So I'm gonna go to plating. We're gonna go to plating and I'm gonna show you just how simple this is. Woo! You can hear that fish sizzle. So, we got here our mushrooms and Brussels sprouts. All right, let me adjust this camera for your viewing pleasure. All right. This dish is actually, with my clients, extremely popular. I have a client. I know she's watching. 
She's like, but uh, I made this for her. She was so happy. She was so anxious. I think the people around her was wanted it, and she dropped it on the floor. Oh man, it broke my heart. So I made it for her the next day. But yeah, just like that. Woo! I put my fish right on top. Right on top. I'm gonna put those those saute little pieces of ginger right on top. You know I'm gonna get all that. And then we're gonna keep it keto, alright? All that butter. All that butter. All that butter. Alright? So now. Pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Let's come to the light. Let's come to the light. Let's come to the light. Mmm. There you have it, guys. Ginger, brown butter. I got cod. The recipe calls for sea bass with Brussels sprouts and mushrooms. And look at all of that butter. Now, now we gotta give this a taste, right? We gotta give this a taste to see if it's, if it's worth the hype. All right? To see if it's worth, if it's worth all this hype. Mm. You can smell this right now, I promise you. You would be about that keto life. You wouldn't care if you lost weight or not. You wouldn't care about anything. You wouldn't care about anything. You see all the fruit in the back? We grew up mad Dominican, you know, if you grew up Dominican in Washington Heights, so anyway, you got all types of ornaments on the walls and your mom never lets you get rid of it. You know, even even when you're 43 years old, you still can't take it down, you know? So, it's okay, I love it. My mom, my mom likes it. Mmm. Mm. Oh my God. Hmm. Woo! I always do this to myself. Hold on. Hey, if you've been following me on social media, you know today's our first day is our relaunch of YouTube. So we live, we all the way live, but mm. hold on. You've been following me. Then you're used to that. <laughs> Man, that's delicious. That fish is so flaky. He was he wasn't lying. Let me tell you something. Find yourself a fishmonger, become friends, and ask him. Venga adelante, pasa como vivo. So now, find yourself a fishmonger. All right. And whatever he recommends, go with that because this fish is delicious. It's flaky. It's buttery. It's sweet. It it, it tastes like it was just swimming. All right. The Brussels sprouts are crispy. The mushrooms are earthy, and then all that rich butter. The ginger just pops with flavor. This right here is what you call a true keto food gasm. So again, thank you guys for tuning in to my first keto live on YouTube. We we're gonna be here live every Tuesday. Next week I got something super delicious, <laughs> super amazing. You are not, you are not gonna wanna miss it. So if you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, and uh, so you can so you can be uh, kept up to breast when we announce new videos and new content, which we'll be posting every week. Um, the team's been working tirelessly. We're so excited to drop a bunch of new content this week and answer a lot of your questions that you've been posing to us. Um, so please like, share right now. Please like and share with your friends. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Peace!